Okay, so we're starting this week's What Sold video with this piece of vintage loveliness. Um, look at that color of that leather. Uh, very 60s, very 70s, somewhere in there. I was trying to figure it out from the label. So speaking of the label, let me see if I can pop down to that one. I found this jacket at the thrift store last week and I saw the color, of course it jumped out at me. Uh, I paid $10, I think they had it marked 20, but it was half off on clothing that day. So $10 for this. The tag wasn't on the back of the neck, it was hidden in like the side seam. But when I saw it, you know, I probably would have gotten it based on the color anyway and the style, but it, I saw that it was Sills and it says it's a Bonnie Cashin design. So that kind of sealed the deal because Bonnie Cashin was a designer and I knew we'd have some name recognition along with um, the just awesomeness of the piece. And so I went ahead and grabbed that jacket. It sold for $150. Now, I want to say, like, I just want to tell you, it sold like within minutes, like within an hour or less. And it got favorites right away. People found it right away. And that usually is a sign that you've underpriced something. Well, the deal with this is that it had damage. So I was actually, if you can see it, see there's some gouges and things like that in the back of the coat. And I didn't see that until I got home. I saw it as I was checking out actually, but I thought it was like on the sleeve. And then I went to look for it and then I found it was like in the back here. But I was just like, you know what? This is just awesome. I'm just gonna price it to sell. I'm gonna price it, you know, like, I mean, I'm totally happy turning $10 into $150. You know, maybe in perfect condition, we would have been talking two or two or a little bit higher. Um, but comps, there were comps of some other different colored ones and they were not even that high. So I think I did really good with $150 and I am very pleased with that. And who cannot, you know, who is not never, not happy with a quick flip, you know, bought it at the thrift store one day, listed it the next day and sold it that next day. So that always works for me. Next up is just a hat. Uh, nothing special about this one. I actually picked this hat up quite a few months ago and um, it sold for $15. No, it sold for $12. Sorry, I have my phone here. Um, so $12, uh, I wouldn't pick up, I've, I've come across dry duck here. I'll just, you know, this style before I've come across it since. And I was like, you know, I just kind of passed on it. So the ones I had, I had this one and another one, similar style and it's, they sold eventually, but just, you know, $12. And I think those came, it was before we were really going to the bins or the outlet and so um, on a regular basis. And so I'm pretty sure I paid $2 at Goodwill for that. I do wanna say before I go too much further that something I forgot to say on last week's What Sold video is that I have been skipping over my fabric sales. So if you saw my fabric video where I um, talked about my backlog and my bins of shame, <laughs> And so I had a listing challenge where I was listing some of my vintage fabric and newer fabric. And so I have made a little bit of a dent in those bins, not, not crazy, but like that first week I really focused on listing it. And then, you know, the, the next week or so I am just more conscious of it. So I'll do, I'll list a couple other things and then I'm like, oh, I'll go grab a piece of fabric and list it. Okay. So it's on my radar. I've just not been listing only fabric for two weeks, but I've had some sales and I've had some good sales. So there will be a separate video coming up probably next week where I'll talk about some of the ones that have sold, the pieces that have sold. And then, like I said, I'll talk about brands in general that you want to look for, for uh, buying and selling fabric. Uh, this is a Starbucks. It's a little bit of an older, it's 2006. So they had a, a, a line back then called Barista, and this was the Aroma Solo Travel Tumbler. So this, 
mug was designed to just kind of fit right into their coffee maker, the aroma coffee maker, and you know, you fill up your tumbler and and you were good to go. This sold for $18.99. Um, we used to sell them probably around like when it was out or a little bit after, maybe right after they were discontinued and people like still had had them and we would come across the mugs fairly often at the thrift store and we would sell them consistently for $20, $25. Now we find the price is a little bit lower, but people are still buying them. So $18.99 is what we sold those for. This was another really quick sale. I got these at our bins, our little outlet center and, you know, paid pennies most likely. They just... Pottery Barn, I, I picked them up because they were Pottery Barn, and Potter, Pottery Barn dishes can do pretty well. It had the name of the pattern right on the bottom, saved me so much time, and they were made in Japan. Now, it was interesting because when I looked at comps, there weren't too many of the mugs, and there's a bunch of plates and dishes in this pattern listed. Now, ellipse comes in different colors, so there was different colors listed of the plates and like tan and, and different colors and stuff just really wasn't moving. And I was like, oh great, you know, nobody's looking for this pattern anymore. But I listed these two mugs together. So I just put them together and I did $24.99 and they sold like that same day or at least the next day or something like that. So again, super happy about that. Say I paid a quarter a piece, 50 cents into $25 is and fast. That's the goal, right? This was a soft shell hoodie jacket. I vaguely remember picking this up at Goodwill. I think it was at the beginning of summer. They they switched, they flip-flopped their pricing at our Goodwill where winter stuff, they do mark it down in the summer and then they mark up the summer stuff and then they switch it back in the winter. So shorts were like crazy expensive, like $7 for a pair of shorts, but then, which is high to me, but in the winter, they'll be like $4.99 or whatever. But coats and jackets were normally like $9.99 and they dropped them to like $7.99 or $6.99 in the, in the summer. So right at the beginning of, um, of summer, I was still looking through the coats, saw this one and picked it up for $6.99 and it sold not for, not for that price, but for $40. So it was a racing jacket. Um, FXR is the brand. I'll just show you. I just kind of, whenever I see any kind of performance having to do with racing or motocross or anything like that, I kind of stop a minute and look it up. This was just a soft shell. If it was a more heavy duty kind of racing coat, those those are gonna sell for a lot more money. But $40 wasn't too bad for that one. I sold this pair of FootJoy um, spikeless golf shoes. And so you probably know most, you know, golf shoes have, you know, are kind of known for having the metal um, spikes <laughs> in the bottom of them and the soles. And so FootJoy makes a line and I'm sure other companies do too that are spikeless. And I think there are certain golf courses that require you to have spikeless golf shoes. So I thought that would be a good pickup. They did take much longer than I expected to sell. Um, I'm not positive of the total length, but you know, I think I listed them in the winter, even before golf season and we went all through golf season and nothing. And just when I was like, ah, nobody wants these, somebody bought them for $40. This was just a little kitchen utensil, again, picked up at our bins, um, outlet center. Um, nothing special on this one, just kind of a basic kitchen utensil, which is always making me like super happy with how well stuff like this does on eBay. It's always stuff I used to hold onto for Etsy. Um, this one, we sent an offer for 18 and that's what it sold for, but it's just like a little flower sister, very basic kind of thing, no special colors or anything. But a lot of times people like that. So $18 for that. Then some tools. There are a couple tools in here. 
this one was sold for that full asking price, two sixty nine ninety nine. dollars and um, my, we got feedback on it. I just noticed we got good feedback on it today. And so I'm so happy the buyer was happy with it because dealing with a return on something big and heavy is kind of a pain. So they were said they would shop with us again. Now this is again, not something that was thrifted. This is just something that my husband is not using or is not using as much. So he's trying to simplify and clean out. Um, but, you know, as we look at some of these tools and the little tool related items today, you know, my husband and I were talking and, you know, he, we may do a video. It was suggested on the last video um, by one of you that, you know, he could do a tool video for us. And, you know, that's not like it's not going to happen. We'll definitely put it on our list of things to think about. Um, but he just wanted to make people aware, like a lot of these DeWalt type things, the tools that he's showing, it's not like you're going to find these at thrift stores, like maybe yard sales, like, but seriously, like stuff just, you know, he's, a, he's on the lookout for different things. And he just was like, yeah, these are ones that are probably just someone's going to sell directly on Facebook or something like that. Um, I know there's resellers who buy things like this at pawn shops. And if they can get sales or good deals, then that's a way, you know, to kind of specialize in this. But, um, you know, these aren't items at this point that we're necessarily making any kind of profit on. We're just, you know, we're going to reflect that in our taxes that, you know, these are not profit making items, <laughs> if that makes sense. But, you know, DeWalt is a good name. Sometimes accessories and things like that can be, get, can get picked up at yard sales and can do pretty well. So I think the next one is also a tool. It's a cordless flashlight drill with the charger and all that. Same thing, used it for a little while and I'm not needing it anymore. So it sold for a hundred and fifty. And that was full asking price too. And this one. So, you know, if there's any lesson, these sold these just sold for $20. Um, you know, we were talking about if there's any lesson to take away from from some of this is besides the fact that you can look around your house and sell stuff from around your house, but you know, he bought this stuff and used it. It was a, a place we were building for ourselves or remodeling for ourselves. And so he did a little bit of coaxial work there. And then over the years, maybe once or twice used it again. And then he sold it. So, you know, sometimes that's a possibility. You just need something for a little while. You can use it and then resell it. Next up is a vintage Banana Republic uh, bucket hat. So I love the old Banana Republic logo and tag. I am always picking it up when I find it. It, it does not sell for super high prices. Um, but to me, it's just fun to find. Okay. So it's just back when the logo actually had bananas on it. Right. And Banana Republic as a company started off as more of like a travel safari kind of type um, store is what they specialized in and then kind of turned into just mainstream fashion. This one we sent an offer or accepted an offer for $20. We picked this up at the bins as well. And, um, oh, did we? This might have been a Goodwill one just because of the tag. I, cause I think I remember getting excited about seeing the vintage Banana Republic tag. So anyway, $2 at the most on that. So $20 for that hat. And they were happy about that. And that rhymed. Cole Haan, actually sold two pairs of Cole Haan men's shoes this week. One on eBay, one on Posh. Uh, these just sold for $30. We just took an offer. Uh, we do okay with Cole Haan. Um, I don't even remember where we got these. Wow, that picture is totally upside down. But, um, yeah, just kind of basic shoes, size 11 and a half. We do okay with it. It's not, you know, 
always going to be super high. I'm sure there's different lines of Kolhan that will sell for higher amounts, but it does seem to have a following, you know, in the, the men's shoes category is mostly what we focused on. Now, this is fun. Okay, back in the day, this just reminds me so much of like, not my early, early reselling, but I guess back then too, and I kind of did it for a while, but for a while, Wallpaper Border really sold pretty well, and you could find it, especially if you could find things with, with a very specific theme, and when I've come across it lately, and, you know, even with a theme, it just does not seem worth it at all, right? So these were three rolls, you know, it's not necessarily anything I've ever discussed with my husband, but he picked these up at a thrift store on a recent thrift trip out of town. And we, you know, I didn't even, it was one of those trips where he just loaded up and I just saw what he bought after we were done. And he picked these because the theme was horse racing. So he figured there's still a, you know, it was a good theme as far as someone who maybe has like a entryway or laundry room or study or something like that that is going to be like horse, you know, horse decorated, <laughs> especially horse racing, not just Western, but, you know, um, with the jockey and all that kind of thing. So a lot of times what I used to do in the past is, you know, you don't always have to do that. Sometimes you can, what I'm about to say, but what you can do is open one roll and unroll it and in order to get the picture of what the actual border will look like. Um, sometimes you can find it on the internet if it's not, if it's not that old of a, you know, a roll or anything like that. Um, but, you know, my husband didn't do any of that. Like, he just kind of showed as much of the pattern as he could on there. And he sold the three rolls together for $50. And it sold for full asking price. I'm sure he paid, like, a dollar a roll at the, at the thrift store. Next up, I had this in a previous What Sold. So we had two of them. It's a Carhartt together with Stanley stainless steel water bottle. Um, it sold for $45. And again, I had picked them up. There was two of them there. They looked like they were in like extremely good condition, like never used. And um, I just thought, well, maybe my family could use them or whatever. I didn't even stop to look them up. They were just good enough of a price that I figured we can sell them or we can use them. And my husband looked them up and said, yep, they're worth it. So he got them listed real quick. And within a month, I would say they've both sold. So $45 each. And I paid, I think, about $4 each one. Outdoor research. Um, this is a woman's goose down puffer vest. It's kind of that season. Like I've said before, uh, goose down puffer type outdoor clothing vests actually do pretty well and a lot of times it won't matter the brand so or what I'm saying is like the brand like I'll buy a Calvin Klein puffer vest that's goose as long as it's real goose down um, but I wouldn't buy Calvin Klein most of the time for anything else um, I'm not like on the lookout for it so outdoor research Again, Mr. Pishpash and I were talking that this is kind of one of those brands. It's kind of like Mountain Hardware um, and even REI where it has a following and it's not going to sell necessarily for huge high money, but it will sell. And this sold for not for $50, but for $35. Now, the next one is like super, super fun. I think if, I, if I've done what I think I'm going to do, the thumbnail showed this. Now, this totally made me think of the um, video that I just did about the five craft related items. And I was like at the thrift store and I like had done the video and if like a week later I was at the thrift store and I see this little box up on the shelf and I'm like, ooh, vintage singer attachment. Like, what is it? What is it? You know? And so I picked it up for, um, three dollars 
Now I opened it up and I saw what was inside and it had the book. And so I opened the book too, to make sure that the pieces were included that were supposed to be included. It looked complete. So I grabbed it. So I did a quick search on eBay at the thrift store and I was like, Oh my goodness. So I saw prices over a hundred, even over 200. So what's important is that, um, on this one, as you can see on the side of the box, it gives that number right there, 160720, and it tells you what machines it fits, right? So the ones that were selling for over 200 were made specifically to um, fit the featherweight sewing machine. Remember we talked about the featherweight in that video? And so those attachments for the featherweights sell for more. Now, what's interesting is that there was, so when I looked up this specific number, prices were a little bit lower, but there was one lady who had, I mean, was obviously in the business, sewing business, and she, she had all this extra information and she was actually providing that information in like a booklet form as part of her listing. So her listing was a little bit higher but from her and from some other information on the web, I found out that this attachment would work on a featherweight as well. There wasn't enough difference in its size or whatever, and like it would work, right? And so the people who mentioned that it would also work on a featherweight got a little bit of a higher price. So I said, you know what, I'm going to just, there was only her high ones listed at that point when I listed mine. So I put mine up for 120 and um, I took an offer. I sent out an offer pretty quickly uh, as soon as I got some watchers and someone accepted the offer for 107.99. So, I mean, maybe, maybe it's that other seller and she is going to just kind of add it to her little pile of them, right? She can make 50 bucks or so on, on the listing and it kind of fits her, her niche and her little specialty. Totally fine with me because I turned $3 into $107 and again, within a couple days and totally happy with that. Sold this flatware. This flatware is an interesting brand. It's Wedgwood. And so let me find, there's a little mark right here. And then it also says it here. So Wedgwood Stainless. Now I've sold this brand before. It's not the fastest selling um, flatware brand, but when people need it, they need it. So these forks sold for $25. And yeah, I still have, okay, one more, two more maybe for that week. So St. John, I picked up this St. John little cardigan. It was actually St. John Evening. Now the problem was uh, there was no size tag in it anymore. And in person and in regular light, I couldn't really see anything. But then like when I, when I put it up to take the picture and when I took the picture or up in my like stronger light to take the picture, I felt like I could see a faint stain on it. So I just kind of mentioned that there weren't any other pulls or holes or anything like that. Um, but I think you could just totally wear it and no one would notice that, you know, I don't think that they would notice that um, stain because it was really faint. It was so anyway, but I mentioned it and I was willing to go down quite a bit on the price because of that. So even though I had it listed for $99.99, I got an offer for $55 and I paid like $5 and I just said, sure. You know, because, because why not? Because I don't know exactly what size it is. And then it did have, you know, somewhat of a defect. So ready to just move things on. This next one on eBay was just an example of me wanting to reunite things with new owners. <laughs> because this was not worth a whole lot. It's, a, it's supposed to have a saucer with it. It's a little coffee mug by Arabia of Finland and the, the, pattern is Ruska, Ruska, and it, um, 
is a good pattern to sell, but that was the only piece that was at the thrift store. And I recognized it right away. And I was just like, oh, there's no saucer. And, you know, I was like, well, you know what? I kind of debated. It was 99 cents. And I said, you know what? I just want this to go to someone who needs it and who wants it for their set and, and everything. Um, and I don't want it to just sit here at Goodwill until nobody buys it. And then they like smash it up or something. So that just was me being a vintage rescuer. <laughs> $15 plus shipping. I still made a profit. It's all good. Over to Posh, we have this outdoor research. Um, there's that brand again. And I, we sold this little beanie. It's definitely getting to be beanie season. Sold for $16. It's a nice color. Nike SB. So SB stands for skateboarding. It's their, you know, it's kind of like, Y2K, but then even a little bit further. So it's not always like vintage or 90s or anything like that. But of all the Nike lines, I think it's the one that I would still be interested in. You know, when I find it, I kind of stop for a minute and try to decide whether it would be worth listing. It doesn't sell super fast or for super high money. We, we have sold some of the sneakers um, Nike SB shoes for a pretty good price, but, um, you know, this one took a little while and I got a $24 offer. So I took that. It's just a button shirt, but kind of a cool pattern. THML. I've talked about this brand one other time. I believe I sold something recently and oh look at me. I put size medium in the title and it's clearly a small. So we will see what happens with that. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, well, it was only $12. If they need to return it, they can return it. I do have measurements. I have no idea why I put medium on there. So strange. But anyway, it's been listed a really long time. And I, you know, I had even hesitated because this one was listed for so long. I had hesitated the last blouse that I found, um, but then I listed it and it sold within like a, a few days or a week or something like that. And um, I think THML was one of those anthropology um, brands that they sold there at one point. Anywho, and we sold another baseball cap. This was just kind of a basic dodge spell out. You know, we've talked about in maybe in our baseball video, baseball cap videos, that car, usually car ones can do pretty well. And if it's like a higher end car, then you'll get higher prices. Anyway, $15 for that. Here's the other pair of Cole Haan shoes. These actually did better than the dressier ones. These sold for 40. What did the other one sell for? I forget. 35? Maybe it was 40. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll just move on to the next one, Columbia. Okay, Columbia is just one of those, you know, when we lived in Washington, are you ready for story time? <laughs> um, when we lived in Washington, the thrift stores thought Columbia was like made of, out of gold. They would always up price Columbia items. And I just thought it was funny because they sold it at our grocery store. They sold it at Fred Meyer which is a Kroger store, you know, it, it goes by lots of different names. There's a whole big Kroger family of stores. But Fred Meyer had clothing, and it was kind of like a super Walmart. It had groceries and everything else. And so, um, you know, they sold Columbia there, and, and Columbia gets marked down big time. So it's really kind of hard to resell unless it's very specific pieces, maybe the, like the heavier outdoor pieces or things that like different lines that are a little bit more, maybe harder to come by. But I saw this fleece at a thrift store and I paid $5. And I think, I mean, I want to say I paid $5. That's, that was a long time ago, but it was new with tags. And I'm like, originally it was 75. Well, it was rare that it was going to be full price at a store. 
you know, it'd probably sell for 40 or something like that at a store. So I thought, you know, if I sell it for 50, uh, not 50, if I pay five and sell it for 30 or something like that, that'll be great. And plus it was a size one X. So I went ahead and like pulled the trigger on it, even though I don't usually sell Columbia unless it's vintage or something very specific. And I was right. It took forever. So we finally, you know, I don't know. We just, I got the offer or whatever the other day, or, or maybe my automatic offer went out and somebody accepted and I was like, yay, <laughs> was taking up room in a bin. And Sundance, I think we talked about this brand last week. So my two Sundance pieces sold, you know, fairly close together. This is the newest one I had listed. So it actually did not take that long, but it only sold for $20. And um, it was like, it was kind of cool. It was like a burnout velvet, you know, where the velvet part is raised and then there's the flatter part underneath. Moving over to some of the other platforms, this was a fun sale on Ruby Lane. It's the favorite recipes of Wellesley alumni from 1950, and I got a message from the buyer that she was so happy to find this cookbook because she remembers using her mom's cookbook when she was younger. So um, that sold for $28. That's kind of where I focus when I look at cookbooks is very specific either a nationalities or um, ethnic cookbooks or regional, very regional cookbooks, but with a specific type of food. Um, and those seem to do the best for me. So this one sold for 28. And then I sold a couple Barbies for 55. I got messaged if I would accept an offer. I think I just had them listed at 65. But they definitely needed a little bit of TLC. Sorry. Um, but they are original vintage Barbies um, from the 60s, I believe it was. I didn't try to do any cleaning or anything. Um, one of them's neck was split. And so that one, you know, I was really focused on just selling the one good one. And then the other one kind of came with it. So... I just kind of did it that way. I sold this pattern. This was kind of frustrating because I, in the pattern shop, I have the option on that people can make me offers and people rarely ever do. Well, Etsy used to have it that if you, if they, if someone made you an offer and you accepted it, the buyer had a month to accept it, right? I think I've told you this before. But now they switched it to two days. So they switched it to 48 hours. So she made the offer. I said yes. It was $8. I said yes. And then nothing. And then the offer expired. And so like a week later, she made me the offer again. And, you know, normally I'd be like, no, forget it. But I thought, you know what, maybe she's not used to the fact, even though I think people should just pay for their stuff right away. She might not have checked Etsy. Some people don't live on the internet like I do. Um, so maybe she thought she had longer and then went back to check and it was done. So I was nice. Well, I uh, accepted and then it was crickets. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, that's it. But sometime right before the 48 hour deadline, she went ahead and paid for it. So it worked out. Um, but I guess it doesn't show that it was an offer. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it just sold for the $8 that it was in time. And then my husband sold another one of his learner fake wood little organizers. You see the brown ones, you know, fake faux bois, uh, fake wood ones at thrift stores. They're made out of plastic. And um, he likes to paint them different colors. And so I sold a green or he sold a green one last week. And this week we sold a red one. So that's kind of fun. And then a Starbucks mug sold for $16. This is an older mug. Here's more of that barista line that we were talking about. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. So 2001 vintage. So yes, I put vintage Starbucks mugs on Etsy. I don't put modern ones on Etsy. 
and I had another Mercari sale. So I sold some more, par some a partial bottle of perfume. This was Hermes, and um, can't really sell that on eBay anymore. Uh, people will tell you that you can sell it under the collectibles category, but eBay is cracking down on that as well. So that was true for many for quite a while. Um, but now a lot of people who sell perfume have gotten their uh, items removed from eBay if they had it in that category. So only new, they only want new items on eBay. And um, so we're, I'm going by that. I, we hardly use Mercari at all anymore, but it's good for situations like this because it is pretty much the only platform at this point besides well, I didn't even know what else you could do it on. You can't do it on Posh because you can't ship anything perfume-related uh, with priority. It all has to go ground shipping. So that's my story. As usual, leave me a comment down below to share with me your uh, best sale of the week, your favorite sale of the week, uh, anything you want to say about anything that I talked about today. I will see you guys soon and hopefully I will have, I'm going to go out on a limb and go ahead and, and tell you, I'll have the necktie video out pretty soon. Okay. Anyway, I'll see you guys later and I hope you have a great rest of the week.